Hello and welcome back to another episode of uh, Warhammer 40k, the best and most creative team compositions. My name is Heiken and today we're continuing the team composition with a team comp that I initially thought would be really, really bad. But if you do have the right equipment and if you know how to play it, it actually is quite competitive in its own uh, way. It does have its downsides, I will uh, say that from the start. But it is an interesting, different approach to the game. So this is what I would call the Affliction team composition. It's a very tanky team comp uh, that uses damage over time for its purpose in order to kill the enemies. So let's talk through uh, each of the different uh, roles in the team comp and how the team actually deals damage. So. For the damage dealers, we're this time starting on the right hand side because the damage dealers are going to be the Apothecary and the Purifier. You can run it with an Apothecary and a Purgator as well. In a nutshell, there are only two damage over time afflictions uh, that affect enemies. Uh, number one is Bleed. Bleed can stack on top of each other, but only uh, demons and organical creatures are bleedable. So that's a very, very strong source of damage. The second uh, is burning. Everything and everybody can burn, but burn doesn't stack on top of it uh, each other and is limited to two, respectively three points of damage per round. So the idea here is to uh, dish out both of uh, these conditions but on top of that, also make sure that the enemies have the least possible wiggle room. Naturally, um, there are a couple of enemies that are more difficult for this composition, specifically mechanical units. And for that particular purpose, we will need single target damage. And we're going to see how that is going uh, to work. So let's jump right into it. The first damage dealer is going to be the Apothecary. Uh, the important abilities here will be Scorching. Um, which uh, will deal four points of bleed uh, for a relatively large area. The other important um, ability will be Emperor's Judgment, believe it or not, because with that, for two will points, you can effectively immobilize enemies, which is very, very helpful if they can't move, they can't attack you oftentimes. As a bonus, we're going to go for Servant of Skulls, so that uh, we do have a Hala Skull, as a mimic beacon there are a couple of ways how this team comp is trying to not get hit or minimize damage and the Hala skull is one of it we're trying to get as much willpower on this character as possible hence we got the sacred incense um, and we are having or we're running an armor that gives um, willpower as well as resistances and movement speed the movement speed is quite important i found um, as uh, the character needs to get into position as often as possible. Since nothing else is really required from them, uh, you're free with uh, the bolters and uh, the uh, melee weapon. I ended up using a bolter that adds four bleed on top of the normal damage uh, with an affliction, so that in itself is a nice uh, way of doubling down on an existing on an existing item, so to speak. You could also use a, a bolter that is particularly good against mechanical units. Let me uh, search one up. This one here, as an example, would work uh, called Bone Blight. has decent ammunition so that you don't need to spend a lot of time reloading because we don't have any support for reloading and is coming in with eight points of damage plus a nice little uh, crit on uh, top of it. So we can use that just to deal with the mechanical units. And in terms of the melee weapon, I went uh, with uh, the Rod of the Ancients, which is 100% Aegis. On top of it, it increases your Aegis. So this means this character will come in with uh, four Aegis uh, as a standard. So that's four armor although not wearing Terminator armor. So that's character number one. The second one will be the Purifier. Um, it works really also with a, with a Purgator. All you need is that grenade tree down here because we're going to deal a lot of damage with the grenades. But uh, the reason why I used Purifier is because he also has Cleansing Flame as an ability, uh, which allows any burn to go on as 
permanent. You heard that correctly. So theoretically, you can just withdraw after uh, setting enemies on fire. And after enough rounds, they will die. There is no if and, uh, and when and maybe they will die at some point. Um, I have elsewise uh, skilled him into a flamer, uh, mainly because flamer are underutilized and with the right flamer you can, uh, if you position well, uh, deal a lot of damage because it is all AOE damage. As grenades we're uh, going to rock uh, the red grenade uh, which deals 7 bleed damage. Um, mind you that is going to stack. We are using an, an armor. Uh, that allows us uh, to not only have greater grenade damage, but also higher range and more ammunition. So everything that you need right there. So that means every single grenade has four ammo. We're rocking eight grenades overall. The second grenade that we're rocking is the Psychotrope grenade, mainly because we like the crazed um, debuff or affliction, which uh, creates a 50% chance that the enemies will attack each other. So that in itself is a mini halo skull and on top of it it deals a respectable nine points of damage right away so he's going to use those mainly and is going to use um, the flamer whenever needed as the flamer i used one of in my opinion the best flamers in the game has seven range which is fantastic for a flamer on top of it um, the uh, abilities here allow the uh, the flamer to get even one more range so we're rocking at 80 uh, eight range with a um, 85 um, cone so that's almost a 90 degree angle and the flamer itself deals quite a bit of uh, damage. Uh, you can see it deals five points of damage and you can flame of purity on top of uh, that. It uh, doesn't stun because it's not necessary and uh, you can uh, create a pretty large uh, permanent um, patch of uh, flames. Keep in mind everybody who is incinerated will continue to burn. Um, so unless they are purifying themselves they will die eventually. So those are the damage dealers. Now we got a librarian. The librarian is coming in with mainly the skill down here, the sanctuary. On top of it you can um, let him teleport as well. So all you need for this build is really using the sanctuary skill and then maybe some psi bolting because uh, that will mean he's going to deal uh, damage if needed. Very um, uh, will point efficient build because you're only using two will points um, for this here and uh, the psi bolt only uses one will point uh, since i had a few points left over i also uh, got uh, teleportation and price of power price of power is nice because with the right amount of focus you always gain one will point back when you use a warp charge ability such as sanctuary effectively lowering sanctuary's price to one uh, warp uh, uh, point uh, one will point and this character is built around uh, will points because he does not need to do much else. Um, he's built around effectively um, uh, the focus, not will points, because focus will increase all of the trigger chances, including his Aegis, um, which he does have an automatic uh, chance down here to, uh, to trigger. So how did we do that? There are a couple of loadout items that increase focus. We're going with uh, power and faith. That's 35% focus, a little bit of willpower and four armor. Very, very nice um, all round um, Terminator armor. Um, as the melee weapon, we're using a staff as well. Staff of Cypromancy would uh, work uh, with more willpower, but I wanted to um, kind of get something else going so we're using a focus staff case invoker it's another 35 percent focus 25 from uh, the normal skill tree gets him to 95 percent chance which effectively means everything is triggering every single round that means the auto aegis here is happening as well the staff in itself is nice has three extra crit damage so can come in at nine points of damage if needed uh, this character can support with damage. I've used Dire Exorcism uh, since a lot of the larger enemies 
um, are also considered to be demonic so having that extra plus four demon right there is very very uh, good so that's nine points of damage uh, plus the psi damage of his psi boulder is 12 points of damage a pop on top of it um, it uh, with psi boulder allows you to do pint which is another affliction simply taking one ap away from uh, the enemy making them even slower and finally we got a paladin uh, which is going to use mainly um, in this particular combination the shield so uh, is using defend position and a few melee attacks in order to give him some more range i decided to put smite in doesn't require you can still use a shield and smite and on top of that go for fury of the ancients which if you overcharge it for four will points deals 12 points of damage and knocks back the enemy the idea is like to get them further away from us uh, with both uh, the shield interception as well as fury of the ancients 12 damage is nothing to uh, scoff at in order to give him more range potential we're going into a situation where we are having uh, terminator armor with extra grenade um, ammunition as well as bigger um, uh, radius and we're going to use red grenades here as well fully uh, going on to that bleed train so the team here is capable of uh, clearing an area quite efficiently and once i saw how well the team works i figured might as well make that guide so let's see how the team comp plays out all right, we're starting today's exhibition with an engagement uh, with uh, quite a, a number of pretty high health uh, enemy Chaos Space Marines. So that's a great example because we have the worst right here. Um, we got uh, Lord of uh, uh, Virgilance with 27 hit points. Uh, we got my personal hate, the Noxious Blightbringer and we got another 21 uh, hit points blight lord terminator all of which generally are pretty uh, sizable problems so the way that we want to go about uh, the situation is for starters when we are encountering these guys we want to make sure that we're uh, removing um, all of uh, the or purging all of their abilities and since uh, one of them is completely immune to uh, to that we might want to hit the other three. Uh, the purging also has the nice little side effect that you're starting to burn them for an uh, infinite amount of time. Um, on top of that, we are using our psychotrope grenade. You can see the grenade itself deals quite a bit of damage, actually. Does not remove cover though and we are also going to hit every single one of you with a bleed grenade. Unfortunately over here affliction is resisted. That's not optimal but we will deal with it at a later stage. For now let's hit them with another bleed grenade. I just bled my own guys. Uh, that was unclever. Removing the bleeding uh, with a stratagem, so that shouldn't have happened. Uh, we're gonna go in. We're going to tank uh, over here. Very good. To get the defenses up, I like Sanctuary. You can see that plus our stratagem high sanctuary brings us to 18 armor 12 over there and uh, even uh, yes, the quote-unquote more vulnerable targets um, are actually uh, quite safe and uh, sound Face. continuing with more bleed And we're warp charging the immobilization. Unfortunately, not a lot of targets, so I can't really show you uh, that much. But we're eventually getting there. Um, 
Bleed 14 points, so he's already dead. Bleed 18 points, he's also already dead. 18 points, 20 points, so with 24 he is not yet dead. Uh, which means we're Psy Bolting. We could uh, use the Psy Bolter, but th there is no need for it. We're going uh, to see just how good the actual bleed uh, works. Now that everybody is uh, nicely lined up here, we could theoretically uh, use a Halo Skull, but I don't think that that is necessary. Instead, what we're going to do is uh, we are uh, making sure that this guy here stays in his lane. You can see 16 points, uh, 16 armor, 18 armor, and we're also quite immune against affl uh, afflictions. Enemy loses his uh, uh, turn, and then the bleed kicks in. Taste to death. And even with the Plasma Bolter, we're not seeing anything stick here. Silence doesn't stick. And guys, these were already very, very powerful Space Marines. Let's see uh, what the uh, sustain of this team is going to look like. Because a new, uh, a new challenger arrives and we just might want to welcome them. All right, even without any further buffs, you can see that uh, the team is doing super, super well uh, with regards to armor. And I'm glad that this guy spawned because this is by far, the Nurgle Wardog is by far the least favorable outcome for us because the Wardog is immune to bleed um, and uh, does have a lot of armor, uh, comes in with uh, 46 effective health. So let's see how the team is going to do uh, go about uh, them. In case of the war dog, he is immune to knockback, so uh, he uh, simply will not care. But we want to make sure that he uh, receives as much damage as possible. Um, a little bit of Fury of the Ancient, not an overloaded, just a normal Fury of uh, the Ancient. We could, could combine that, but I rather prefer to have Warp Charge in case uh, the War Dog approaches. So, and this is nice, uh, nicely Damn where um, uh, some of uh, the uh, previous defense Bolters? mechanisms uh, come into play, right? So we do have um, a Bolter uh, that in itself um, deals quite a bit of damage, so we do have five points of damage uh, here, and I think you had another bolter that was competitive. Not Road of the Ancients, of course, the bolter. There you go. So with Psybolt, we're looking at uh, six points of damage. It's not great. Uh, like I mentioned, you will need uh, to use uh, quite a bit of resources, but imagine that this here is the least favorable foe for us. So, and we're fighting on long range, so it's really not um, not helping the cause either. We're going to keep a Hala Skull in the re in reserve, and I would like to use the Flamer to also showcase that. Look, if we were any closer. Um, Seeking the we, could, we could have already uh, started hitting him. Luckily, the flamer itself I am his will. still does uh, burning. We could use uh, flames of uh, purity to deal uh, quite a bit more damage, and I think we're going to do it exactly that. You can see, although we are must sanctify my uh, fighting against our arch nemesis, so to speak, it still works out reasonably well. Moving up to get a little bit more damage of the bolter um, in, and uh, from up close, we're dealing seven points of damage with uh, Psy Bolter. Um, he would theoretically be hit. He would have lost, um, which would be much to our advantage. Uh, so, again, that was potentially the hardest um, pack that we could deal with with that uh, with that setup. Let's uh, take a look at an uh, at a pack that is easier. So, fast forwarding. 
All right, we got exactly what we wanted after another teleportation. You can see we're we're getting a little, little bit lower on the warp charge, but that's not a problem. We can uh, still manage to do it. So, enemy has been clustering up nicely in this particular case, and our um, uh, librarian is uh, tanking all of them. So, uh, before we're doing anything, uh, let's make sure that we're uh, that we can uh, get out of here. If we were to simply move out, we would uh, provoke a lot of attacks of opportunity this team here however is uh, very much based on uh, unity therefore we're teleporting out uh, we're very low on willpower but with our stratagems in this case i'm running heal but i could theoretically uh, run uh, willpower to refill him and the teleports aren't necessary by any um, stretch of uh, the imagination so that's fine. Let's uh, uh, continue with park. what we originally wanted to do. Uh, this uh, team here can uh, very much uh, hurt the enemies badly. So we're starting with a uh, red grenade. For the Emperor. Bleed. Fall. On top of uh, setting crazing, uh, uh, crazing to all of them. Come on! All right. You're I'm a bit uh, sick and tired of that. We're just yes, moving to here. Oh, Mechanical one is immune uh, to bleed, but that's okay. Um, this is one of those situations where you can easily use enrage, uh, enrage uh, just to keep them off of you. You don't need to spend uh, anything else. Plus, you can put mobilize in there, keeping them nice and uh, tight. All right, back uh, to what I was about uh, to do beforehand. Onward, we could now theoretically psychotroke uh, as a grenade or we're just using the power of our uh, flamer, setting them all nicely aflame for an unlimited uh, amount of time and forcing, uh, forcing them to take uh, damage. Uh, more AOE damage for just two. Pushes them a little bit further back. We're moving uh, in. We're holding the line. We don't even need uh, the extra bleed damage at this point. And I would like to regain willpower on our apothecary. So slowly but surely we're hitting individual targets just to regain the uh, the willpower. The bleed and the burning uh, kicks in nicely and we have killed every single one of them. Reinforcements arrive. Um, let me fast forward so that we can get to the reinforcements. All right, for the final part of uh, this guide, I will show the end uh, battle where we are almost out of willpower uh, for our librarian. But that's not a problem because uh, I deliberately wanted to showcase how this team can uh, go very well with low work point count. It just requires a little bit more patience. As you can see, Sanctuary uh, gets us up very nicely. I'm going to use High Sanctuary in order to uh, put up a very nice defense. 100% resistance on top of that and we are ready to go. Goal? So let's start by hitting the enemies with Craze. Most of them are afflicted. Shortly afterwards we are Hitting them with uh, fire, cleansing fire that is. One of them is immune to 
uh, psi abilities, but that really doesn't uh, matter all that much. Rest is burning and perched, that's what counts. And. I think all of them are being hit by that uh, grenade. There we go. Nice little bleed. Speaking of which. More bleed. And whilst we're at it, make sure that you guys cannot move. Perfect. Immobilized uh, is a very, very uh, good opportunity uh, to not needing to deal with them. We're not even using a Hala skull in this particular uh, case. So, continuing to here. Let's hit these guys with another grenade. There we go. The bleed stacking continues. We're defending. And I was just thinking about can we somehow gain more will points? Uh, the answer is potentially not, but we could hit either of uh, the high, higher hit point targets with a smite. That, by the way, works even if you're out of uh, range. Good. Given how much defense we do have, I feel very comfortable just overwatching here. You can see everybody north of 10 armor. These guys cannot move up to us. And are now attacking the first bomb. Before dying, that is. Every single one of them died. And of course this guy uh, wants to showcase uh, the bad enemies, which is why they continuously bring up enemies that seem uh, mechanical. Good, more reinforcements. We're up on the safe side. The Bloom Spawn uh, still has uh, plenty of hit points, but that's okay. Um, time to make sure that our Hela Skull is being appropriately used. Everybody is enraged. Uh, perfect. That means we have nothing to fear. Face the Empress. A little bit of bleed, not too much. We're uh, mm, keeping our uh, will points nice and tight. Prepping this for what is your will? our librarian. We're back to four will points. One more, and we can. Uh, start teleporting up. Standing ready. All right, our grenades are still uh, plentiful, so might as well just use that. Ah, and you can fiend. see they are enraged, and now they are crazed on top of it. On my way. Moving up, and. Nicely burning through them. So burning the definitely works be. on mechanical targets, and uh, what also works is the five will points. That's the five will points that we were looking for uh, with our uh, teleportation. Oh, and we got an inertial fa uh, field, so no teleportation for us. Doesn't matter. We slay the darkness. Aye, you can see I we're simply damage overloading the enemy. Uh, they do not have the means to uh, go through us. Yeah. 
And also the Boon Spawn does not have uh, the means to just to just uh, win against us. Alright, nice. A couple of uh, more Space Marines. And I think this is a good uh, point to leave you with the impression that even those new Space Marines, if you just uh, look at what, the, uh, what our grenades can do, would now start to bleed. And then be crazed. That uh, would uh, already kill them. Some more damage, uh, and Indian. since we haven't done it yet, bleed. Taste my fury. Plus, immobilize. It will be done. And since we can't teleport, might as well do this. Moving up here, giving ourselves a sanctuary for just one will point. We're still at four. You can see we're effectively gaining more will points than we're losing. Our tank moves uh, nicely in and we're just going to defend this area. So one last time just to see how, how well the afflictions are ticking down. Not much is happening. These guys are trying to heal e uh, each other. <laughs> and we haven't taken a single point of damage there. <laughs> All of them died in uh, a blazing, in a blazing hail of fury. Taste to death. We're ending this episode with an. Uh, I wanted to overcharge it. Anyways, you get the point. Uh, it's a lot of damage. Uh, they can't really withstand it, and that's the whole point of it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the affliction team. It's definitely something I that um, I haven't seen online, so it's a Saiken special, and it's an absolute fun team. So if you enjoyed the Affliction team, leave a comment uh, down we below. Let me know if you want to try it out, and I need to take care of my little one. Have a good one, and see you in the next guy. Bye-bye.